All right, so what we've got so far then is the skeleton of our project. We've got a lot of content to fill in, but this is the whole point of this file, that it's the, uh, that it's the uh, content layer. This is the part where we're going to have our basic content, and then later on we can style it and add interactivity. Um, what I want to do is add a little bit of placeholder content to, to the screens, like the home screen, and then remember also, based on our design uh, document over here, our wireframe, you know, we, we can think about adding some of these things at the moment, like the interfaces and all of that. So, mm. well, maybe let's 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 add all this sections. The, we'll finish the skeleton, then we'll add some content. We'll get to, back to content. So let's say, mm, let's set the uh, let's work with interface B, in that we have over on the computer screen, all of these are, are buttons that should go somewhere. But we won't create them all just yet, but this screen is supposed to be our computer classes and it's supposed to have a list of classes that people can take. You click a button and then it shows you more information about the class on a different screen. So let's go over to the computer section uh, down starting on line 143 or so. I have here a little comment that I made myself, computers section start. So that at a glance, wherever I see my comment, when I look at that, I can orient myself. Heading 1, computer classes, then the actual main content starts, and then a heading I'll say there, take a computer class. And this will be a list of some computer classes. These will be all fictional. But then we've got the, the list view, which has these dividers. And I'm thinking that we will do like a basic computer classes, intermediate computer classes, advanced computer classes. Therefore, these dividers are the perfect thing to use as those basic, intermediate, advanced. So we'll say there's a divider there. I'll call it basic classes. There's another divider there. If you didn't create more than one divider, look at how the uh, code is set up, and you should be able to figure it out. But I need a new divider name. This will be intermediate classes. And advanced classes. I never created a third divider in Kodika, but based on what I'm seeing here, I need a list item uh, with a certain data role and then another list item with another data role. So I can just copy that chunk. This is a complete chunk where it's got a divider and an actual button inside of it. I'll copy that. Before the end of unordered list, I'll copy all of that, copy and paste afterward. Intermediate classes, advanced classes. And if I take a quick look at my code, result, then I'm starting to see something like this. The dividers with their names and then each individual button will be clicked on. I'll make up some classes here. COM 101 Intro to PCs Um, 102, intro to max. I'll figure out if I want to do something with these bubbles later, so I'll just leave it as is. And again, you don't have to have exactly what I have, I'm just making something up. Com1, com201, intro to Linux. A 
third section com 301 intro to what should we say here intro to uh, augmented reality Well, each of these, in theory, I'm going to click, and it's going to show me more content on a separate screen. So each of these should be a different section of new content. Uh, interface B. For a little practice, we will create a starting template for one of these, which then we can copy and paste for multiple for multiple screens and what we're going for is interface B header content area so that's not a lot of coding let's let's do that let's go to the very end of our code before the jQuery stuff and I'm going to create a comment block to say com 101 section start com 101 section end and in between creating a new section data role page ID call this uh, com bass these are our this is our basic computer section. Header and article. These are the basic tags that will define our screen. We don't need anything fancy like a nav bar. We're going to omit the footer. So header, data roll, footer. Uh, some content in the header. Com 101. The article gets role of main and class UI content. And we'll just put something here. What are we calling this one again? Intro to PCs. What's that? On footer? We're not doing footer on this section. Header footer. Whoops. I'm thinking ahead. Yes, thank you. Header, 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 tag, and header footer, or and header diddle. And then some, we'll put some real text later. The pictures and whatever we want. We're just building a basic section here. If we wanted to see this result, this should be, if we, if, it's not so complex, so it should work. If we wanted to see our result, we're missing one thing, though. We don't have a way to get to this screen. We gave it an ID, but we're not referencing that ID anywhere in the code. We don't have href equals pound com bass. Right, we have uh, 
COM 101 interactive PCs, href, pound, nothing. Uh, we just created a new section with a new ID, so make sure that your buttons in the list view have the href point into this new section we just made. And then save it and run it. All right, so I'm in my computer screen. I click on COM 101. It slides over to COM 101. There's my uh, header, main content, H1 content. Oops, no back button. I don't want to rely on the web browser, so I need to add in a back button that is inside of our header. One more attribute. Data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. This is enough of a template for me to copy and paste for the other sections that I'm going to need. I have COM 102, COM 201, and COM 301 in my case. So I need to copy and paste this chunk of code three more times, if I've got it working properly. Let me double check that this works, and I go to COM 101, and it goes over. That's fine. We have the slide transition. Remember I said you don't want to have a whole bunch of different transitions? It would be okay to have it as slide there, because I have consistently the flip animation from section to section of the big sections. And then if I'm going to these subsections, these can have their own animation of slide. That's okay. Or I can make all of these flip as well. But for better user experience, these have a different animation to give the user a conscious and subconscious clue that you're looking at different content than the content you're looking at these top levels. This seems to work for me. I don't have a footer. I have content header back. I'll copy and paste that three more times. Change the content a little, sure, but the most important thing is to change the IDs. And then set the IDs up on the hrefs uh, in the list view element. So I'm going to copy that whole block of code there, COM 101 start, end, paste it one, two, three times. I now, I now have three copies of the same thing, combass. So of course I have to be very careful that I change it all. Com 101, this is now com 102. Yes, a little tedious at the beginning. Something like the full paid version of Kodika might make this faster. It's not so complicated at this point, and if you are going to make something more complex, we do have more shortcuts that we can use. This new section I will call com int. This is my intermediate computer section. So com 102, and I'll say Boy, no, this is still in this is still in basic, isn't it? So we should call them instead com base PC and com base Mac because they're all on the same base or bass section. So com bass Mac. Can this be com 101? Yeah, we could do that too. We can call these 101, 102. Um, we could use numbers in our IDs, although it's not that common because IDs in classes are related to CSS and JavaScript and all that. So we could, but I would prefer to use words. 
Combass Mac. This one up here, then Combass PC. You have to decide capital P, capital C, lowercase. You know, you just have to decide what you're going to do and remember what you did. Com 102, intro to max. If I know that I'm about to change all of these sections, I could change all the sections first and then test my results. Or I could uh, change some of my code and then test my code at that point. It takes longer, but I think it's better, especially as a beginner, to write some code, test the code. Don't assume that you're going to write four things properly and then test your code. Something could have gone wrong and then now you're You've got to backtrack to find where did I go wrong. So I'm going to do it the slow way in checking each change. So uh, since I changed it to Combass PC, I need to make sure that I've set that up on my on my list view, Combass PC. And then this other one, Com102, is now Combass Mac. I'm going to check that these work so far. And then I'll go on to the other ones. The other ones are not properly named, but they shouldn't cause any problems at the moment. Let's see here. There's 101. There's 102. And then I need 201 and 301. You get the idea. You don't have to use exactly the IDs and such that I'm going to. But you get the idea that I need to now get these unique IDs and put their references up there. Since I'm already in the list view element, I might as well set these hrefs now. And so this will be com int, that's the one I meant, of intermediate. And I've only got one intermediate class there, but if I had other classes, I'd, I'd choose better names, but we get the idea. We'll be able to name these uniquely as necessary. Com int for my intermediate Linux class, and then com ADV for the advanced 301 class. So I've got those other sections waiting for me. I just need to change their IDs and such. So back to the bottom, 102 section end. I've got 201 section start and end, com int. Com 201, intro to Linux. And yes, I'm down here where I can edit that one right there, but I will pause to save and check just in case. And then continue with 301.
All right, so that was us right here working on interface B uh, for that bit of content. We have A and B. Let's look at uh, developing uh, interface C. Interface C is for like a pop-up. What we want to do is from the home screen we're going to click to make a pop-up happen and then um, we will make a new screen. So let's, uh, let's create a new section then at the bottom. This will be about section start. That pop-up screen is its own section, but it's got different attributes uh, so that it behaves like a pop-up box. The, this is going to be a new concept, so I'm going to take a little detour here. Uh, from the heading, I'm going to make a pop-up. I'm going to take a detour back to the jQuery mobile documentation because I have an idea of what I want to do from my wireframe. I may not know the code yet. <coughs> we didn't get any of that code out of Codica, so if I'm not around to tell you the code, well then we go back to the documentation. We need to find out in the documentation, how do I make pop-up windows? So I can go either to the API documentation, which is the more sort of technical explanation of it all, but demos is usually what we want to look at. We go look at demos, 145. We need to find somewhere on the left or the right how to make pop-ups. That may not even be the name that this thing is called because, okay, I see here widget of pop-up. So I'm going to click on that. Data roll pop-up, basic pop-up. Oh, that's not quite what I'm looking for. But we'll create an interesting pop-up like that or a tool tip like this. That's interesting. That's not what I need at the moment. Make these light boxes. Again, all the example code is right there. Oh, I can make some cool menus like that. All the code is there. href pop-up menu, data rel pop-up, that's new. Slide up, this is just some design. Div data roll pop-up, there's, there's the data roll pop-up role to help us make a pop-up menu, like this one here. I'm not trying to make that, but if I wanted to make something like that, here's the example code. Well, this interesting one. It's a little sign-up thing. All of these are, are working by having a data roll, data rel of pop-up. So not roll, but rel. And uh, oh, that's kind of what I'm trying to create there. It doesn't have the close button at the top. Here's one where I can click on different parts and I get this pop-up. So, in this particular example, what we need to do is 
create some kind of link, data rel pop-up, data position to, data transition, pop, with a div, data role, pop-up, and an ID. So in my code at the moment here, I want to create the part about the actual div. Now this is using the generic div. We can also use section. This is a section of content. In our code here, this will be a section. Data role pop up. So that it behaves in a different way than a regular page, we have a different role for it. This goes on to say an ID. We'll add an ID, of course. We've got data overlay theme B. Uh, that's what sort of background element might we, might we want. Background color, but we'll skip that one. We'll leave the default A. Data theme B, again, the pop-up is dark, the B theme. If we want to change it, we could. We've got something called data dismissible false, so it will not allow that box to be closed unless they click a specific button to close it. So we'll see the difference there in a moment. This needs an ID, so ID equals uh, about. The rest of it can be designed as any sort of page with a header, a content area, a footer if we want, but we don't really see footers on pop-ups. The example also shows that. There is the div of, there's the header of data role header, and then there's the article of role main. So this is going to be built the same, the difference is the data role. So here's a header and, a, and an article. Data role header. Some content there. Say about article needs a uh, role of main and a class of UI content. And just some text for the moment. That's my about section. Data roll pop up. <clears throat> I need a button then to activate uh, that screen. We'll set that up on our home screen. So this just shows a href to that particular ID, data rel pop-up, data position to window. We can control where it, where it appears when you click, what animation, of course, how do we style that button. Okay, so we'll back up to the top, to our home screen. In the home screen, I'm going to put it in the grid because I've got a grid there that uh, can divide up the screen. So we'll put here about, that'll be an A tag. 
So somewhere up on line 48 or so, up on the about, uh, on the home screen, we're about to create an about button. href pound about. Data role. Let's do data. No, we'll do data. We'll do both data role and data rel because here we need to we need to say button so that it behaves like a button. The example has class equals and then the long way. This says class equals UI BTN, UI corner all, UI shadow, UI blah blah blah. All of that is the is the way to create a button in, in a very specific way or the shortcut of data role button. The reason a person might want to do it the long way is they want to change the default behavior of the button, change the drop shadow, maybe give it two rounded corners at the top but one at the bottom straight corners. This is going to be all rounded corners on all four sides with a drop shadow. If I want to change the look of a button, I have to define it via a class. But as a shortcut, data roll button. Data rel pop-up. And can add an icon. We don't need data position. I don't I don't think so. At the moment, this pop-up will happen right in the center of the screen. If you wanted it to appear in different parts of the screen, we could set that data position to. Uh, an icon might be nice, data icon, the about screen, uh, maybe that's where we would use info. Check my results. So on my home screen, I've got an about button. What's that? Without data rel. Hmm, okay, let's confirm that. Kind of, but is it popping up? Is it showing like a pop up or is it showing full screen like that? Okay. Let me confirm here. 
because again we've got this example project. We might be able to check our code. Data role page data dialog true. For some reason, I have different, slightly different code in my example. Uh, data role page data dialog true. different ways to do the same thing and um, I didn't copy all of the same code from the documentation but so that it works I guess back on your about section data role page data dialog <coughs> true I'll also add a data transition to my original link of pop so that it looks like it pops up. Right now it just appears because the default is fade and that's fine but if it's a pop-up I would like it to sort of animate that it pops so there is a data transition of pop that we will add to the link. So back at the top, href about, data role button, data icon info, and then data transition. Pop. So now it looks like it pops. I think for the moment we're good. We've started to create these different interfaces. When we come back, we'll do that uh, side panel. We've got a pop-up, screens, interface ABC. We'll do D next time. That'll be over on the art classes where we have a panel that slides in. You might want to look at jQueryMobile.com to see how do I make a side panel. We'll do it together, of course. Once we start to get that basic stuff in, then we'll add a little more content, then we'll keep going, and then before you know it, month one ends, part one. So part one is all about building this kind of interface in basic, adding the map, then the advanced uh, part of it with the app framework. This is what we have so far. So. I think we're going pretty well. I'll put my code in the folder in my notes. If people need help, call me over and we'll have a little lab time until 9.30.